Hey everybody, Chris and Mary Coase here with another video for you. And in this video, we're going to talk about the word taught. Or is it thought or tuft or tote? How do you say this word and what is this word? We're gonna talk about that in this video. First of all, we have to talk about the fact that there are a lot of confusing words in English. And why is that? Why is English so confusing? Especially when we look at the words how they're written, and how we say them, right? The spelling, how we write words, and the pronunciation, how we say words. In a lot of cases, people just explain these weird things in English as being part of one of the dialects of English, like Australian English, British English, or North American English. But in all honesty, it doesn't matter which variation of English you speak, you're still gonna have a lot of these words that look different from how they sound. And that can make it really difficult for people to learn how to spell words. Even native speakers have problems spelling correctly. Maybe you've seen something called a spelling bee, where children compete to try to spell words correctly. Yeah, it starts in school. But most of the strange things in English, including spelling and pronunciation, come from historic roots of the English language. For example, the Anglo-Saxons, the Norse, and the French introduced all different types of spelling and writing when they used different Germanic and Latin writing systems. So this made everything very confusing. And from the beginning, nobody really knew what the right way was until they started creating dictionaries and books that said exactly what the rules were. And that brings us back to the beginning of English. You might know, or you might not, that English is a Germanic language. That means it came from German, and that's where the roots of English are. A lot of people are confused about where English comes from, and at the core of English, it's a Germanic language. But English has gone through a lot of changes and transformations in the time between uh, when people started speaking it and now. And we can definitely identify four different periods of English when English was really like a different language. There's Old English, there's Middle English, there's Early Modern English, and then there's Modern English or Contemporary English. If you ever have the chance to read an original work of Shakespeare, then you can see a lot of things that are different, words that are written differently, phrases that are worded differently, and just a different way of communicating in general. And that's what we call early modern English, or some people call it Elizabethan English from Queen Elizabeth, or they call it Shakespearean English because Shakespeare had such a big influence on the English language. And so many different changes to the English language have made it difficult for people who are learning English to know what is right and what is wrong, and also for native speakers to know what's right and wrong. I mean, you learn it at school and everyone grows up speaking it, but sometimes you don't connect the sounds that you say and the letters that you write, and that's where we have mistakes with spelling by native speakers too. A great example of this is the word taught. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of writing taught with an O, and I can understand why they might make that mistake. I mean, the word thought is spelled almost the same. We just add an H, right? And we change that first sound. So if we just take out the H, it looks like taught. But there's a problem because first of all, taught written with O is not a word in English. Yeah, so if you watch this video just to figure out what that word means, there's the secret. It's not a word, it doesn't mean anything. Instead, we should write it with A. And when we write it with A, then taught is the past tense or the past participle of the verb to teach. So for example, I'm a teacher, I'm teaching you, and yesterday I taught you. And I have taught thousands and thousands of students around the world. So this is the word taught with an A. Now there's another word that's also pronounced taught. It's T-A-U-T. And this word is used a lot less than taught with A. And it's used a lot more than taught with O because taught with O is not a word. So T-A-U-T, this means that something is pulled tight. It's not relaxed, it's not slack, it's taught. We say this a lot about 
a rope or a string or some piece that connects it that needs to be very tight. So if you're climbing a mountain, maybe you need the rope to be taut. You need it to be pulled tight. That's what it means. So you can understand why we don't really use it a lot, only some specific situations. So some people might confuse this word with the word T-O-U-G-H-T, -T, right? They might think that that is how you spell this word because they don't write this word very often. They maybe only hear this word in speech. And then when they try to write it, they might make a mistake. They might misspell it. They might spell it wrong. So usually when we see someone write this word with an O, we know that either they just made a mistake because maybe they don't know how to spell it correctly, or maybe it was a typo. Maybe they were typing the word thought and they forgot to write an H. Or maybe they were trying to use the word taut, like a tight rope, and they didn't know how to spell it. Or maybe they just put an O instead of an A for the word taut, uh, meaning the past tense of teach, right? So it's definitely a mistake. Why they made that mistake, that's the question that we can ask still, but definitely it's a mistake and it's not a real word in modern English. On top of that, there's another word that's pronounced taut. It's T-O-T. And this version of taut means something completely different. In fact, two different meanings come to mind. The first meaning is a tot, like a little tot. This is like a little child, a small child. I would usually use this if there may be a toddler, T-O-T, a tot. And another meaning of the word tot, T-O-T, is a potato or a dish with potatoes. Now, I'm not sure if this meaning applies in other places where people speak English, but personally, I've heard people call a potato a tot and have a hot tot, and that meant a hot potato. Now, there is another explanation why some people might make a mistake with this word. They might be trying to write the word tough, which is T-O-U-G-H. And maybe by mistake, they put the T at the end. Now, we know that when we have U-G-H-T as an ending, then we usually pronounce it ought, right? So that's why we can guess that if this word was a real word, T-O-U-G-H-T, then it would be pronounced taught, just like taught, like to teach, just like taught, like a little baby walking around, and just like taught, like when we pull the rope very tight, right? We can guess that it would be pronounced like this because of the ending. But when we take off that T, now that ending might have a different sound. And in this case, it's very different. It's the sound Right? So the word tough does not have a T at the end, just like the word cough. And you can see that the ending sound is f, but in words like thought or sought, here we have a T at the end, and you can see that it's not pronounced like an F. So it's correct to say his mother taught him not to say bad words. This means teach in the past, right? His mother was the teacher who taught him these things. Or we could say, before you jump, make sure the rope is taut. And this means make sure it's tight, it's not loose. We could say, this house is bigger than I thought, right? This is the past tense of think. And again, it's important to include that H. Or maybe we can say, don't leave the scissors on the table. We have tots running around. This means we have kids running around in the house, so put the scissors away. But we cannot use the word taught, T-O-U-G-H-T, because it's not a word in English. Check the dictionary. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you press like, press subscribe, leave a comment down below. And if there's something that you didn't understand in this video, you should watch it again, because very soon I'm going to post another video with a giveaway. So if you're interested in playing that game and being a guest on my YouTube channel, make sure you watch because very soon I'm going to tell you the rules to my next game. See you next time.